Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to our toddler time. <sighs> Hold on. It's saying my phone can't be like, it can't be sideways. That's ah, fine. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to our toddler, toddler time. We're so glad that you could join us this morning. Today, we're going to have a special treat. We have a tank with some hermit crabs in it. And Miss Jessica, in a little while, is going to come because these are her pets, and she's going to come and talk to you in a little while about hermit crabs. Now, with school kind of starting back and things like that, then we kind of think of the summer kind of winding down. We're in August, and some of you may have gone to the beach this summer or maybe have plans uh, before Labor Day going to the beach. And when we go to the beach, we think of ocean, we think of waves, we think of seashells, all kinds of seashells. and critters that, that live on the beach and things like that. And here we have, here we have um, all types of shells and things that come from the beach. And so you might like to go along and pick up shells on walking on the beach and uh, feel the waves coming in. So uh, decided that we would talk a little bit about hermit crabs today. And I have a book called Hector the Hermit Crab. But before I get into that, our crab, our crab today is going to be uh, making a hermit crab out of paper plate. You need scissors, crayons, glue, maybe wiggly eyes, and maybe some construction paper, okay? So that's going to be our craft today, all right? All right, Hector the Hermit Crab. Beneath the deep green ocean lived a hermit crab called Hector. Hector was very shy. He would hide in his shell if another crab walked past, and he didn't talk to anyone. One night while Hector was sleeping, something terrible happened on his shell. Oh, this is terrible, he screamed when he woke up and saw it. All right, it's back. Hector tried everything to get rid of it. He squashed, he poked it, he sawed it, he chopped it, and pruned it, and repotted and stopped. More flowers were beginning to grow and they were getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. No, he cried, get off my shell. But nothing worked. Hector was so tired and and miserable after all his hard work that he went straight to bed. To Hector's dismay in the morning, when he peeked out of his shell, he saw that a whole crowd had gathered around him. Hector tried to tiptoe off, but the crowd followed him. I hmm, wonder why they followed him. Leave me alone, Hector pleaded. To his surprise, the other crabs were actually very friendly. We love your shell, they chorused. I wish I had a flower, one said. You look so pretty, said another. Hector was delighted. Soon, he was chattering happily to the other crabs, and he didn't feel quite as shy as he had before. Making friends wasn't so difficult after all. The end. All right, now I'm gonna turn it over and Miss Jessica's going to come and talk to you about hermit crabs, her pets, which you know would be just an ideal pet because I understand there's not a whole lot of care. It's not kind of like a dog and a cat that you have to feed all the time and brush and give shots to and all this. So she's going to talk to you a little bit about the hermit crab. Hey 
guys, what's up? All right, so um, so I do have some hermit crabs here. I'm gonna pull one out in a minute. Maybe he'll come out and say hi. Uh, I say, Michelle's right. They are super easy pets. Um, uh, pretty much if you like, you can get them at Petco or you know any other kind of pet store most of the time. Um, so pretty much you just kind of you put some mulch down in your little in their little home or whatever in their little habitat um and you add some, I, I added some shells some driftwood from the beach um this little they like to they like to burrow they um they are diggers they like to live in, in the dirt um so they i got their a little cave here for them and a um, little water bowl um if you want it to water them that you get a little sponge and you keep water on it and they they just kind of drink from the sponge. Um, so you just uh, you also have to spritz them with water about every day or so. You know, just keep it. You know, they like being moist, and you know they're they're used to living in in uh, areas that are both you know on land but also kind of wet, kind of like a marshland or something like that. Um, so just a little bit about hermit crabs. Uh, there are over eight hundred species. Most live completely in the water, but the rest of them live um, between land and the ocean. Uh, so they're not actually crabs. They're more closely related to lobsters. Um, they are in invertebrates, which means they don't have a backbone. They have an exoskeleton on the front parts of their bodies, but then the back part of their body, the part that's, that's really in the shell, is they have a really soft tail, so that's why they have the shell so that they can protect themselves. Um, let's see, there. You know how a shell is uh, turns around in a in a spiral. Well, their that soft tail I was just talking about. It's it's curled up so that they can curl it around the inside of the shell so that they can, and they have a bunch of little legs back there on their soft tail so that they can hold on to the shell. Um, Let's see. They can live to be up to forty years old. Now, for a crab, like for crabs, that's that's a pretty long time, you know. If you ask me, uh, they are omnivores, which means that they eat both meat and plants and out or um, meat and plants. Uh, so they use their scavengers. So they usually they eat things like algae, um, like dead animals. Uh, they like. Mussels and clams. Uh, let's see. Um, when they find a new shell. So hermit crabs like to live in groups. So I actually have two hermit crabs in here so that, you know, they're not lonely. They have a little friend. And I might get some more. Who knows? But uh, they do like to live in groups. Sometimes of over 100, 100 hermit crabs in one little area. Um, when a hermit crab finds a new shell, they will actually, uh, all the hermit crab, they, they will share the shell with all of their little friends and who, which whatever crab fits in that shell the most or the best, that crab will get his shell, but then he'll hand his, his previous shell down to the, the next smaller crab. So they're kind of, they kind of, you know, swap shells around and they don't grow their own shells. They use shells from other animals. Um, let's see some other little notes here um well i guess i will go ahead and mess up. yeah he's starting to come out here so i'm gonna yeah, take him I see him moving now yeah so if you want to if you ever get a hermit crab i don't know if you guys can see me but you just lightly pick up their shell on the sides so that he can't pinch you and if you want to hold them you just place them in your hand now what's really cool about hermit crabs is they can actually climb up trees and things like that even though he doesn't have hands, he has the little the legs and and sent, uh, little pinchers and stuff. But he, their pinchers are so. Let me small. come closer and let let him just look at him up close. You, you can guy. hardly see. Right? Can yeah. you see him? Yeah, I kind of see him. Yeah. Yeah. You see him kind of crawling, boys and girls. Yeah. He's I really see cool. His legs. He yeah. feels kind of he feels kind of weird, but. Uh, yeah. You know, he won't hurt you. His little claws are so small, he can't really do anything to you. Yeah, isn't that neat, boys and girls? How and, if you, and if you hold, um, try to hold them every day, then they get more used to you, and, they, and they're and they they're pretty okay with you. They're pretty, 
See, I kind of—I moved my hand too quickly, so I kind of spooked him. He'll come back out in a minute. But um, say so if you get one or two, I would suggest getting them a friend. You know, they don't want to be lonely. They like—they like their their friends. But um, yeah, they're just—they're very super. They're very simple pets. They just kind of do their own thing. Um, they are nocturnal, so during the day they like to sleep, and at night you can um, you'll hear them clicking around, you know, walking around their little their habitat and all that good fun stuff. You know, eating food, drinking water, climbing. They like they really like to climb. If you're not careful, and if you, and if you put any any branches or anything up high in your in their in their habitat, they will climb out of the cage and. Uh, and you might step on them, which is really sad. So, so Miss Jessica, what do you feed them? Um, well, I just get, I have some um, little food pellets for them. That you buy at? The so I buy, we can, you can get them at Walmart, Walmart, you can get them at Petco, uh, say any little pet store, you can buy them, probably buy them off of Amazon or online somewhere. Ooh, he rolled over. But um, here, I'm gonna let him onto the table. Just let him do his thing, explore a little bit, if he wants. And they take their home with them. How about that? It's kind of yeah. like, what's another animal, boys and girls, that you can think of that takes its home with it? Like a turtle, perhaps? Yeah. Remember how a turtle like has a shell? actually grow their own shells. That's yes. part of their, um, their skeleton. Yes. Yeah. So, all right, that's a really cool, cool pet, Miss Jessica, because... You know, that's, that's an easy pet if you want something to watch and enjoy, but it's low maintenance, doesn't take a whole Very lot of care. Um, it's not like you have to um, take care of it by brushing it and giving it shots and taking it to the vet. and, nope, and they just do their own thing. They just kind of do part. their own thing. So that is really, really a neat pet. So if there's something like that that you're interested in, as she said, you can get it at the pet stores and uh, Petco and places like that. Okay. All right, boys and girls, thank right. you so much, Miss Jessica. Yeah. I appreciate for you sharing your hermit sharing. crabs with us. All right, that's such a neat, neat animal, boys and girls, and that's something new, something that you probably never really experienced before, and um, so thank you, Miss Jessica, for bringing your hermit crabs and uh, showing us these. Now, would we kind of like to get started with our craft real quick? And uh, as I said, we're going to make a crab. Oh, he's, he's really active now. He's climbing up on the rock, so she's got to go in now. All right, we're going to take a piece of uh, paper plate, and we're going to kind of do this kind of like we did the spiders a few weeks ago. We're going to take it, and I'm going to take, now that hermit crab is sort of a reddish color. Some of them could be red. Some See, of them he's got some purple brownish. on him. He's kind of And cool. I'm just going to take a brown crayon. You can take a red crayon, brown crayon, and I'm going to turn my paper plate over kind of like that. And I'm just going to start coloring my paper plate all over. Okay, kind of like we did with the spiders. Because, you know, um, remember we said that spiders have, remember how many legs did we say a spider had? We had a said a spider has eight legs. We said insects have six legs. And when I was reading, I think that I remember reading that hermit crabs can have about five pairs of legs. Something that I was reading, I don't know, but we know that they use some of those legs to help hold themselves and hold the shell on and the little tail and everything. And, uh, you know, when you go to, um, there's different kinds of crabs, all types of crabs. And, you know, there's bigger crabs that we eat. There's, um, when you go to um, restaurants that sell seafood and stuff, sometimes you can get crabs. And they're much bigger than the hermit crabs. But these hermit crabs, of course, are pets. Okay. Now, we're going to take, we've kind of colored our thing. And we're going to take it and we're going to fold it in half. Okay. Make our hermit crabs. We're going to take it and we're going to fold it. Okay, that's going to be the body of our crab. And then I'm going to take some brown construction paper and we're just going to make him some legs. So I'm just going to cut some brown construction paper. Now you can make some claws if you want to, uh, like like. Um, 
hurt like uh, they have claws that they help catch things and hold on to things and help eat. Sure. So we're just going to make him some legs here. All right, I've just cut about five here. And then we're going to take and take the glue and put it down here. Oops, I'll do my legs. Um, just going to do my legs. My glue's going to hold. Yeah, my legs are sticking to me. Put some legs there. Some legs on a crab. Now, crabs have very small eyes. They have little small eyes. So I thought I would just, you could either draw some eyes on there, or I'm just going to take some of my little wiggly eyes here. And just take some of my little wiggly eyes and pop some out. There we go. And just Put some wiggly eyes on it. And well, and there we have our right, we have made our little crab. Yeah, how about that? Now, so that's something you can do today in making a crab. And um, so now today we've learned a little bit about hermit crabs that they might make a good pet if you want something that doesn't take up much space and doesn't require a whole lot of care. And we appreciate Miss Jessica coming and, and sharing her hermit crabs with us today and tell, showing us something new. And uh, maybe when you go to the beach, maybe you might look for crabs. I want to share one last thing with you, a little quick, quick story that I'll remember. It's called the stubborn crab. Once upon a time, there was this crab who lived at the beach, and he had a hole that he lived in. Well, he lived there, and every single day he walked to the beach, he went on exactly the same path every single day on the beach to go to the ocean to find something to eat. Well, day after day, he would follow the same path, never getting off that path, until one day, the telephone people came along and they set a big pole right in the middle of his path, right where he always went. Well, he came to that pole and he didn't know what to do. He could, didn't think he could go around it or he didn't even try to go around it because he always stayed on that same path wherever he went. And so he started climbing up. You remember Miss Jessica saying they were good climbers, they liked to climb trees? Well, this stubborn crab, he started climbing all the way up the telephone pole. He got to the top and then climbed down the pole to go to the beach. And then when he'd come back, going back home in the evening, he'd climb up the telephone pole and down the other side to go home. And he did this day after day, week after week, month after month, years after years. He did this because he was stubborn and he wouldn't go around the telephone pole. He went up it and then down it. And he did that every day. Until one day, the crab who was a stubborn crab was, had got so old. Because you remember she said they could live to be 40 years. So he was, on, he was going up the telephone pole and he got to the very top. And he was so old and so tired that he didn't think he could make it down the other end. And he just sat there and he died at the top of the telephone pole. How sad, because he was stubborn and he wouldn't go around. So don't be like the stubborn crab. Remember that when an obstacle is put in your way, remember there's always find ways around it. And don't be like the stubborn crab. All right, thank you so much for joining us today, boys and girls. Hope you have a good week, and we'll see you back next week. Bye. I want to pick this up and show the crab. Miss Jessica's going to show you the crab, and he's just really being very active. Look at there. Well, he actually just went back in his little yeah, shell because I said him. something. Well, maybe yeah. he'll come back out. Yeah. Nah, I think he's gone for the day. 
Well, y'all have a great day. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.